Hi, I'm here at the Balloon Fiesta in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And in this episode, I'm going to demonstrate how to do time-lapse photography using your SLR. I'm Timothy Faust. Join me in pursuit of light. So I've scouted out a location overlooking the balloon launch field here in Albuquerque. I have my camera mounted to a sturdy tripod because we're going to have it there for several hours so I don't want it to move. The other thing I've done is I've gone ahead and turned on the live view and have used that to focus. It's a really nice technique when you're trying to focus on things that are in the dark. It's kind of hard to see through the viewfinder. When we're doing time-lapse photography, something to keep in mind is the easiest way to do it is to start from what we want the length of the final video to be and then work backwards. In this case, I want a video to be about two minutes long, which ends up being 3,600 frames. Because this balloon launch is going to take place over the next couple hours, uh, it ends up working out to be about two, uh, two seconds between each capture. So I have my timer here. I've gone ahead and set that up for two seconds. But before we get started on that, I want to talk a little bit about the camera settings. First, I've gone in and set my file format up to JPEG small. The JPEG small file is still four times more resolution than I need for high definition video, but it keeps the file sizes small enough to enable me to get as many photos as possible on each card, and it's also going to speed up the processing time in the computer later. The other thing I've done is I've gone and set it up for shutter priority mode. Um, normally when we're doing landscape photography, I want to be able to get my images tack sharp, which means fast shutter speeds. Uh, you know, lots of depth of field, that kind of thing. However, with, with, this type of, uh, with this type of photography, because we're doing video, if I do fast shutter speeds, the final video is going to be real choppy. By doing a slow shutter speed, it creates a little bit of blur in each image, which will then make the final video a lot smoother. And then lastly, if you do need to make any adjustments to the camera settings, do it in very small increments and several seconds between each adjustment. Uh, that way you don't have a rapid change in exposure in the midpoint of the video. The next step here is just to get it started. And that's it. Whether it's movies or video, it's still just a combination of still images played back at a fast rate of speed. What makes time-lapse photography different is we're recording at a different speed than we're playing back from. For instance, playback usually occurs at 30 frames per second. However, what we're going to do today is we're actually going to record at less than one frame per second. That means that you know, two, three hours of recording time is going to result in a movie that's two or three minutes long. after collecting all these images is going to be to put them together into a movie. Now I'm using Adobe Premiere Elements but there's other programs you can use that will do the same thing. Uh, I've created the new project and I'm going to go up and hit file and get media and then I'm going to click PC files because what I've done is I've taken all the photos and as you can see here put them into a sequence of images. So there's several thousand photos here that I've taken. I'm going to click on the very first one on the list and then click down on this bottom where it says numbered, uh, this box here where it says numbered stills. That's going to tell Premiere that it's, it has a series of images in sequence and it's going to automatically import them as a video. I'll just hit open. And now it appears in my project uh, timeline here, or it appears in my project window. 
Now I can just take this and drag it down onto the timeline. And it's going to take a little bit while, a little bit of time to render this, but if I hit play here, you can already see it's starting to look like a video. Now, one thing we have to go in and change is because this is not a uh, this the frame size that comes out of the camera is not the same aspect ratio as uh, HD video. So I'm going to click edit here. And I'm going to go down to edit effects. Again, this is going to be different in every video sequence. And I'm going to do motion. And what I'm going to do is just zoom in a little. Just so it fills up the whole frame. Now I can also do a couple little things such as creating keyframes, that kind of thing. But we're not going to get into that. Once we're all done, made the changes we want, we can go up here and click Share. And I'm going to click on the Personal Computer option here. And there's a lot of different options we can do. I'm actually going to choose Windows Media, just because I know this works fairly well, and because I have a preset here to do a 30 frame per second. Uh, definition video. Changing my file name. Let's call it the Balloon Fiesta. And just click Save. It's going to take a little bit of time to render, but not too long, and that's pretty much it. Pursuit of Light is brought to you by Altitude Fine Art Photography Gallery, featuring fine art prints, GIFs, photography workshops, and more, located in Breckenridge, Colorado. Learn more at altitudegallery.com. And by Click Elite Performance Packs for Adventure Photographers. Mm -hmm.